Hello, this is Matt from Matt Heaney Apps, and welcome to part five in our series covering all of the basics of Swift Free. In this video, we will take a look at arrays. So let's jump straight into Xcode. Okay, so into Xcode, and we want to get started with a playground. We will call this arrays and save it somewhere nice and safe. And we will delete the string so we have a nice blank playground. Okay, so arrays. What are arrays and why would we use them? So, so far in this series, whenever we stored some data, such as a string or an integer or a double or a boolean, it's always been a single piece of data. So it's been a single string or a single integer or a single double. Even with a tuple where we can store this data together, it's still just a single tuple. So sometimes we want to create a collection of data. So a collection of strings or a collection of integers, which we can easily use to get information, which we can easily add data to or remove data from and so on. Now there's three ways of doing this. We can use arrays, we can use sets, and we can use dictionaries. And these three collection types will be the topics of the next three videos. So in this video, we will take a look at arrays. So an array is an ordered list of a single type of data. So we can have an ordered list of integers or an ordered list of strings, for example. So we can create a list and that list will stay in order until we affect it. So basically, anytime in any of your apps or in your games, you want to have a list of numbers or of strings or of anything, and you want that list to stay in order, then you would use an array. So in this video, what we will do, we will set up a list of strings to represent players in a game. And for the purpose of this game, we care about who is player one, who is player two, who is player three, and so on. So we care about the order that they are in. So let's make an array. We will say var, and we will call this players. And this will be of type an array of strings. So for that, we will say string in square brackets. So square brackets means this is going to be a collection. In this case, an array equals, and within square brackets, we can simply list strings with commas in between. So who's playing this game? Well, so far I'm playing. So Matt, we have Brad, we have Jay, and we have Emma. So we have four strings in this array. So players is made up of these four strings now collected together. And we have so much control over this list. So we have our array. And one of the important things about arrays is that all the information in the collection has to be of the same type. So we can't have Matt, Brad, Jay, and Emma, and then the number 14. They all have to be strings, or they all have to be ints, or they all have to be doubles. So all have to be the same type. Okay, so that's the first big thing about arrays. The second big thing is that this is an ordered list. So this list will stay in this order and each item on this list has an index. And arrays are what are called zero indexed. So the first item on this list is at index zero. The second item is index one. The third item is index two and so on. Okay, so every item on this list has a number representing where it is on the list. And that is the index number. But always remember, the first item is index zero. It is at position zero, not position one. So Matt is index zero, Brad is index one, Jay is index two, and Emma is index three. So if we wanted to get information off of this list, what we could do is take players, the name of our array, and then in square brackets, say what index we want. So if we were to say index zero by simply saying zero, this means go to players and get the item, in this case a string, at index zero, which is Matt. As you can see, Matt. Index one would give us Brad, index two would give us Jay, and index three would give us Emma. So that's how we can set up an array and how we can get information from the array. Okay, so what we could do is say something like let player one equals players at index zero. So I'm first on the list, I'm player one, player two, and so on. Now, in addition to being able to go to certain places on the list with the index, 
We can also do things like players.first. So this will get the first one on the list and we can do players.last, the last one on the list, okay? So that is how we can use the information from this list. But this, as I said, is a list of players in a game. This game needs at least five players to start the game. So what we can do, we can find out how many people are on this list by saying players, the name of our array, dot count. As you can see, it will tell us we have four strings in this array, which means we have four players in the game. And what we could do is have an if statement, players.count, if that is greater than or equal to five, then we can say game on. Need more players. Okay, so we can find out how much we have in this array by using dot count. So we need five people in this game. So thankfully, two more people just showed up. So let's add them to the list. So the first way we can add something to our list is taking players and we can say dot append. We're going to say take whatever is in between these brackets and add it to players. So Ronnie just showed up. Let's add him to our list. So dot append will add something to our list. And the important bit here is that append will add this to the end of the list. As you can now see, we have five people in our game. So if we use players.count again, it will now tell us we have five people. So we have so much control over this list. And there's no way we could ever do this with individual pieces of information. So Ronnie is now on the list, but Laura also showed up and she wants to be in the game as well. But she doesn't want to be on the end of the list. She really wants to be player two. So she really wants to be second on the list. So rather than dot append, what we can also do is players dot insert and it will ask us for a new item to insert, which in this case is a string at index one. Because remember, index one is the second item on the list. And there we go. We've now added another person to our list second on the list. So she can now be player two. Note how if we add an item to our array, then we don't replace the item at index one. So second on the list, instead we insert the new item and everything is bumped over to make room. So as you can see, Brad is bumped across, Jay is bumped across and so on to make room for Laura. So if we insert an item at index one, the item that was index one would become index two. The item that was index two now becomes index three and so on to make room. So we don't replace it, we just insert it. Okay, so we've made our list, we got some values from the list and we got some information and we've now added people to our list. We can also remove from the list. So player three has to leave. He has to rush home to watch a brand new Matt Heaney apps video. So we have to remove player three, which is Brad. So what we can do, take players and say dot remove and it's gonna ask us who we want to remove. Index two, which is the third person. So now Brad is gone. So we look up players, Brad is now gone. Just like when we insert something, when we remove an item, everything after this item will be bumped across to fill the gap. So if we remove index two, index three would then become index two, index four will become index three, and so on. Everything will be bumped over to fill the gap. We can also remove the first person and we can remove the last person. So that would take me and Ronnie off the list. So if you look at players, we're now down to just Laura, Jay and Emma, okay? So I'm hoping you can see how much control we have over this list. That's what I'm trying to get across. So we can set up an array, we can get certain items from the array, we can get all our information that we need, we can insert and we can remove. Now we can also update values by saying the players index zero, which is currently Laura, is now gonna go to Matt. As you can see, is now Matt, Jay and Emma. Okay, we can also just fully update the entire array. So if everyone rushed back, we can just full on update. And there's just a few cool things we can do, such as we can organize this into alphabetical order, which would change the order of our list by saying players.sort. As you can see, it's now in order. If this was an array of numbers, dot sort would put it into numerical order. And one more cool thing that we can do with arrays, we can take players and we can find out if it contains a certain object, dot contains. So we can find out if J is playing. So as you can see, we return true, but if we search for someone who's not here, it returns false because Reese is not on the list. So that's some of the cool things that we can do with arrays. And they're pretty powerful. We have so much control over this list. Now, so much of this is only possible because players is a mutable array. We declared players with a var. So as you may remember from part one, variables we can change. So we've removed, we've added, we've changed values because it's a variable. 
if it was a let, it becomes immutable and these four people would be locked onto this list. So we could still get information from it, but we can't add by append or insert. We can't remove, we can't change a certain item, we can't change the entire array and we can't sort it. So with let, that locks this list in place, but with var, we can change anything that we fancy. So it's just back to constants and variables, okay? Now, just before the very, very end, I just want to quickly say that another thing that you can do with arrays is that we can cycle through this array, affecting every object on this array with a certain block of code. And we will explore how to do that when we look at loops later in this series. So that is what an array is, how we can set one up and how we can use one. So that was our look at arrays. Post any questions down in the comments and as always, thank you very much for watching. If you liked watching this video, which I really hope you did, make sure to hit that like button, hit subscribe, and I will see you next time. Goodbye.